Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Okay. okay this is uh, this is the right. No. Okay. And the right is this. Where is the right? No. Okay. I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. I will, I, I will use a stick, okay? I will use this one to point. Uh, okay, thank you, the organizer, for inviting me. And uh, I, I tried to, to put the title, which has the largest fidelity with the title of the conference. So you see, I, I will talk about the quantum and classical system with long range in interaction, both classical and, and quantum. So I will try to join the apparently disjoint communities, no? Okay, I have, uh, this is collaborator, as Robin says, uh, it's important to have collaborator. And uh, the main, uh, let's say, uh, character, the main actor is uh, Giuseppe Luca Celardo, who is the main inspiration for uh, this kind of work. No? These are the relevant publications we did. The, the last one uh, concerning the classical long range system is uh, still in preparation after a few years, but you know, busy man. So, so Motivation, okay, motivation, it seems to me that in this kind uh, of uh, audience, uh, uh, everybody knows the motivation, both for study uh, long-range interacting system and for study uh, out of equilibrium dynamics. So this is mo more or less the motivation. And uh, uh, long-range interaction have a, a long history. Typically, they start from classical, and this is the, I just put some of the important stuff for uh, long-range interaction, which are, the non-extensivity, non-additivity, the ensemble inequivalence, the broken ergodicity, and the, uh, the abundance of regular orbit and suppression of chaos for large n. So this is more or less, no, can you hear me? Yeah? No, it doesn't work. Ah, okay, now it works. Ah, oh, good, yeah, thank you. Very much. What happens? Okay. Long range interaction. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, now uh, this is a, uh, came later, so everybody knows about the relevant system with long-range interaction. I wouldn't like to spend uh, much time, but uh, today I would like to convince you that uh, long-range inter inter interacting system share a typical property, both classical and quantum uh, interacting system, which is um, not only what we, we, we saw, uh, for instance, this morning, this beautiful talk by um, uh, uh, the first talk, no? The okay. And uh, um, bec because there are another effect that uh, we introduced three years ago. By, by the way, I, I was talking about this effect three years ago just here in Natal. And uh, okay, concerning all this stuff, uh, uh, now I'm talking about uh, quantum system. Let me make some uh, a small review about quantum system. But uh, uh, also, there are some other effects, not only this very fast propagation of uh, entanglement, perturbation, whatever, but there are also observation of some other uh, uh, effect, which seems to be counterintuitive. So it seems to be in the opposite direction. And this is two paper uh, before our results. And this is also for Michael Carson, who's left. And uh, uh, so the, the topics uh, which I would like to, uh, to talk today is uh, what we call cooperative shielding. What is cooperative shielding? Cooperative shield is uh, an effect which uh, we think uh, is general in uh, long-range uh, systems. And uh, it is the fact that uh, few states, if you are talking about quantum, let's say a subspace of the Hilbert space, if you are talking about classical, portion of the phase space, which uh, despite uh, the fact that we have a, a long range uh, interaction, they behave like the interaction with short range. Okay, this is the main goal of my talk. Just to show you that for some particular states, okay, not all of them, of course, not all, particular states, the interaction is like a short range, an effective short range one. These are some recen uh, recent works uh, that uh, they study this effect and uh, in different uh, situations. 
And uh, of course, this was the uh, very nice uh, uh, experiment. By the way, uh, three years ago, uh, there was one guy then uh, uh, of the, the group who made uh, this experiment, and I asked him, why you, you, you choose only uh, spin polarized along uh, Z? You could choose also polarized along X. He says, okay, I will do, but after three years, apparently, it seems to me very complicated. Because the result, uh, according to uh, our theory, it would be completely different. Of course, we don't have a, a complete theory. We, let's say that um, uh, we, we study different uh, system, and for different system, we, we have found numerical evidence of this uh, phenomenon. And we are trying to give some uh, interpretation, which uh, up to now it works uh, uh, only for uh, the case alpha equals zero, which means that uh, uh, all to all interacting system. Okay? So this is the, our understanding. So what is the shielding effect in uh, quantum mechanics? Let's start with a very textbook example. Now it doesn't work anymore. Okay. Uh, let's consider a, a generic system in which you have uh, an Hamiltonian and a uh, perturbation, and suppose that uh, the perturbation is highly degenerate. And of course, in this case, if you start from a state which is in the, uh, in the subspace of the uh, perturbation, then it contributes only with a global phase. So V is a global phase to everybody, so <laughs> doesn't we have completely shielding. This shielding is infinite, but of course this is very trivial. What happens if you don't have uh, a perfect commutation? Nobody knows, no? And also if the spectrum is not exactly degenerate, uh, and so there are m many, many points, no? But for instance, what uh, uh, concerns the experiment that uh, they show is very fast propagation. The important story is that uh, uh, if we consider the, uh, the V, you know, the, Hamilton, the, the part of the perturbation, which is the long range part, then this, uh, uh, the spectrum of this is, uh, is a band, no? You have a banded spectrum. And uh, in all bands, you have uh, degenerate eigenvalues. And so the point is that if you start from uh, a state, which is uh, uh, a superposition uh, of eigenstate of this degenerate ba band, then it is, uh, well, let's say that is very protected from this kind of perturbation. So it is robust against this perturbation. So the dynamics doesn't depend on the long range. Just to show you some example, this is, uh, for instance, okay, how to read this? Okay, first line uh, you see is uh, uh, J is the strength of the long range perturbation. So it's zero, five. Second line is uh, J equal one. So it means that I double the uh, uh, long range uh, strength. And the uh, uh, last line, j equal to, so 0, 5, 1, 2. I double each time the interaction strengths. Uh, and as you can see, the propagation, this is the propagation, this is the site number, and this is the time. Propagation is uh, within a linear cone, so it's like to be a short range. By the way, the velocity doesn't depend on j, doesn't depend on the strengths of the long range. And also, it weakly depends on alpha. First column is alpha equals 0, 0, 3, 0, 5. So you see, there are some sets of states for which propagation is effectively linear, bounded by the linear code. Okay, this is the explanation, but uh, it seems to me, okay, uh, I, I would like to show you all the panoramic view about this uh, model. No? Okay, this is, uh, of course, this, uh, the point is how to, uh, to find the Hamiltonian, because uh, to say that this, uh, there is a short range means nothing. But what is the Hamiltonian which gives you the short range propagation? <laughs> we don't have a definite answer for generic, for generic uh, long range system, but uh, for alpha equals zero, we are able to find, uh, uh, by using some kind of projection, an effective Hamiltonian which uh, for some time it gives you the, uh, let's say, the shielding effect. Yeah, because of course the shielding effect uh, is a finite time phenomenon, okay? So for some time, the perturbation, I mean, for some times, uh, the long range interaction doesn't affect, okay? And this time, which we call uh, shielding time, uh, how to measure this time, uh, I mean, it's not that easy. The idea uh, in this case was just to, uh, to compute the fidelity, no? To compute the fidelity, take an initial state here, 
evolve with the full Hamiltonian, take the same initial state, evolve with the, uh, this renormalized effective Hamiltonian, and then compute the overlap of this. Of course, uh, uh, that this uh, fidelity decay, you see, you compute the, the time at which it decays some values, and then uh, what is important, this is you, you call this shield in time, what is important that this time increase with the system size. So as soon as you take a longer and longer chain, the shielding effect is uh, much more effective. Okay, so this is the, let's say, the important stuff. So take home message, starting with an initial state inside one uh, specific band, that the dynamics uh, uh, is effectively short range up to some time. And uh, this happened despite the presence of a long range interaction, okay, for some particular states. How general is this results? Uh, okay, first of all, we, we have studied this which is a very paradigmatic model, which is the Anderson model, H uh, uh, not is Anderson model here. And then we had a long range interaction, all to all interaction, okay? So again, uh, if we consider uh, only the long range part, it has two eigenvalues. And uh, there is one, which is the ground state, and there is another, which is the, the let's say, the first excited state which contain all the other, uh, elements, all the other eigenstates. So again, we have a presence of uh, strong uh, degeneracy. And uh, just to, to, to show you a very, uh, okay, there is a presence of gap. There are a lot of phenomena, but I wouldn't like to enter into detail. Okay, this is a very funny uh, experiment. Let's say numerical experiment. Consider this, uh, uh, this picture, okay. I start with some initial state. Okay, this initial state is a random superposition of uh, both all uh, some excited state of H and the ground state, okay? Then I evolve uh, uh, for some time, and I compute the probability to be in the site K at time T for two system sizes, 20 and 200. And I compute both with the full Hamiltonian and the uh, Anderson Hamiltonian without the long range part, okay? So I keep off the long range part. As you can see, there is no big difference between 20 and 200, okay? Okay, different evolution. This is a snapshot because this is 200, it's only the middle part. But what happens if I take uh, as initial state a random superposition of xi state of H? So a particular condition which doesn't contain the ground state. So if for 20, the two evolutions, well, they are different, of course, but there are some peaks. Uh, but if you increase the system size, they become very close. So the evolution, I mean, even in this case, we can speak about uh, a kind of uh, uh, shielding because uh, effectively the dynamics is pretty well described by, by H0, which doesn't contain the long range part. And this happens, you see, as soon as you increase the number of sides, and it is much, much better when you increase the number of sides. Even in this case, the time increase with N. Okay, so the idea, I remember when, when I presented these uh, uh, results uh, three years ago, uh, one asked me, okay, but this is trivial because you have a gap, you know? These are state protected by gaps. Okay, and maybe, maybe it's trivial, I don't know, but uh, so <laughs> this was the main motivation to start a classical system. Classical system doesn't have any gap, okay? So, okay, let's start, let's switch to classical system. Okay, so the idea uh, is uh, taking just two, uh, let's say, spin model. This is a classical spin, so they, they live on, a, on, the sphere, on the sphere. And the idea is just to take uh, two uh, parts. This is the nearest neighbor, so short range. And this is uh, uh, the long range with alpha less than one, okay, so less than the dimension. I put some uh, cuts renormalization parameter, standard. Okay, this is for, uh, okay. this is the phase space. This kind of model for the parameter we that uh, we have chosen as a phase transition, oh sorry, because uh, for instance, this is the phase space, this is mx, which is the magnetization along x. This is between minus one and zero, so 
is of course there is a symmetric part. It means that uh, uh, if I start, uh, uh, this is the energy per particle. If I start with some energy, since the energy is conserved, uh, and I start with some initial condition in this branch, I cannot reach the other branch because this is a, an example of breaking of ergodicity. But this is just, you know, for uh, interest uh, uh, audience. Yeah. Okay, uh, how to measure perturbation spreading in classical system? Okay, we use this, uh, uh, co let's say, correlation function, which is, um, let's say, this was introduced by Metivier, ba Bachelard, and Kastner uh, in 2014. And it measures, say, this is the derivative of the component, the A component of the J spins at time t with respect to the, e compo to the B component of the E spin at the time zero. So it should have some relation with Lyapunov exponent because it's related to the tangent map. But uh, I don't know. Maybe also if somebody wants to uh, study this relation, I, I guess that it should be related to some Lyapunov exponent. But in any case, this gives you how uh, perturbation in a classical system spread due to a change in some initial condition in some position. Okay. And uh, uh, just to, to show you, this is an example, preliminary results. This is a very uh, long range system. You see alpha 0.5. This is the strength of the long range, and this is the strength of the short range. In white, there is the uh, Lieb Robinson bound with the JZ equal 0.5. So it looks like this is for very um, low energy with uniform. Uh, condition, initial condition along x with some random fluctuation. So this is a short range, uh, effective short range propagation. And also what happened, if I change here this, the velocity, I mean the uh, short range interaction, you know the, the cone becomes narrow, but if I increase, the, this is 4, this is 2, this is 4, if I increase the uh, strength of the long range, the cone doesn't change. So, independence on J, dependence on JZ. So again, we have a, let's say, a manifestation of uh, shielding in classical system. Okay, this is the dependence on alpha. But this is a, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, this is how it depends on the energy. Okay, this is the low energy, this is increased energy, this is increased energy, increased energy. As you can see, as you increase the energy, you know, the propagation, the linear propagation breaks down. And you, you can define a shielding time, also in this case, yeah? at which linear propagation is destroyed. Okay, how to estimate shielding time? Of course, fidelity here is much more complicated. We have a classical system, and uh, so we we switch to people did before us, which is uh, what is called local fields, and uh, uh, we introduce these local fields, which is uh, some uh, time uh, independent because we average over time and some fluctuation, and the idea this is an example how they look in times, and this is how fluctuations depends on the position on the lattice. You see that the fluctuation decrease with n, even in this, in this case. So average fluctuation of the local field decrease with the system size. OK, so uh, just to estimate, we switch to the uh, rotating frame. OK, this is a rotating frame with uh, this average field. And the, the in, in this frame, the effective uh, uh, dynamical equation are given by some short-range Hamiltonian, which is time-dependent, of course, because we are in a rota rotating frame, plus a rotation along x, which is given by this frequency, which is the fluctuating field. So the idea is very simple. Uh, okay, this is just to show how the mean field works. For this is mean field. The red is mean field, and the, okay, the red is mean field, and the uh, Black is the total Hamiltonian, mx, my, and z. So mean field is a very good description up to some time. But as you can see, at some time, uh, we have some dephasing. 
So the idea is just that the, this fluctuation produces this dephasing, and so in some sense, uh, uh, the idea is that when the, the size of the fluctuation multiplied by the, this time, which we call shielding time, is order of 2 pi, then we are, we are completely the phase situation, so we, the shielding is broken. And to test this, so this gives you uh, an effective dependence of the shielding time as one over the fluctuation. And this is just to, uh, to give you an example. Uh, okay, what we did here, this is the uh, average correlation uh, outside of the linear cone in a narrow region as a function of time. Yeah. For different, uh, the same energy which I, uh, I showed you before. Yeah. This is small energy, and you can see there is a almost a flat, so it means that the correlation doesn't grow in average outside the, the, the cone for a very long time. But then this vertical line is one over the delta B, which is the fluctuation. Sometimes they start to grow. You see that for, a, for almost uh, all energy, more or less we have some, uh, except this, because this is a very high energy. I think that our theory cannot be applied to this uh, such high energy. Mm -hmm. OK, this is the, uh, another very important stuff, because uh, uh, as I told you, this is a cooperative effect, so it depends on n. So this shielding time, which is given by uh, what the inverse of the size of the fluctuation of this local field, how it depends on n. For long range, it's increased with n. These are some uh, random model which give you some prediction. And this is for short range, which is independent on n. And so... This is a conclusion and perspective. Then, uh, so we think that shielding is a novel cooperative effect, and uh, it, uh, we think that uh, it is general for uh, classical and quantum long-range system. And uh, essentially, it's just the fact that for a few selected uh, states, eigen, uh, let's say, manifold of eigenstates in the quantum case, or just set of initial condition for classical. Long-range prop propagation is effectively shielded from, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, full propagation is effectively shielded from uh, long range. That it occurs as only short range uh, would appear. Of course, uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, we have a, a shielding also in the classical case means that uh, the, the existence of a gap could be a sufficient condition, but uh, it's not the end of the story. There are also some other points which are open, which is the general relation between shielding and new field. And uh, ca can I put a head commercial? Do I have some time? Okay. This is commercial uh, uh, head. No? Suppose I give you, uh, uh, no, because since uh, <laughs> I had, uh, uh, I was listening to some talk, no? Suppose I give you some Hamiltonian, black box Hamiltonian, I gave to you. This is a Hamiltonian, this is a matrix, no? big matrix, 10, 10 to the fourth, okay. I compute, uh, uh, I this is uh, eigenvalues, I compute eigenvalues, uh, and I, I compute also P of S, the statistics of the nearest neighbor, okay. Then I check with this distribution, which is called Wigner-Dyson distribution, key square is perfect, perfect agreement, okay, okay. Then I, I study the eigenfunction, let's say selected eigenfunction in the middle of the band of this energy, and I compute the eigenfunction, component of eigenfunction, and I compute, let's say, the distribution of this, and I check uh, what is the distribution with, a, let's say, a Gaussian. Perfect, key square, perfect. What would be your conclusion about the system? No answer. No, come on. <laughs> Wigner dies. <laughs> come on. Gauss, this is component. This is not the, this is component of eigenfunction. This is a uh, Wigner dies. Uh, this should be, okay. The idea is that this should be a ca chaotic, uh, no. Uh, yeah. Non-integrable, yeah, yeah. No, but this is not the case. This is a completely fully integrable model which is the lieb linear model. No, come on. 
Integrable systems, uh, there is a, what is called a conjecture, Boiga's conjecture. Integrable systems are characterized by, except uh, uh, zero measure, but uh, are characterized by Poisson statistics, while chaotic systems are characterized by Wigner Dyson statistics. No? And uh, stati this is a uh, component is completely random. And uh, so this is, a, as in a random matrix theory, a distribution of Gauss. Okay, if you want to know why the, this happened, this is archived. So. Finish. I'm fine. Sorry, so maybe to amend my reaction before. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I was I was totally. You comment misled. to you. 